Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the pristine, untouched wilderness of the Calmlands. Senlea is going to carry on doing the ploughing right there for us. It's going to be a bit of a struggle in that tractor, but I'm sure she will be absolutely fine. And we are going to go up here and we're going to start planting canola, not wheat. So let's go and this tractor is a lot quieter. If I'd known just how loud that Fiat was, I possibly wouldn't have bought it. I would have gotten two of these instead. But the advantage of the Fiat, of course, is that it has front links on it. And that does make a difference. Um, I'd like to get this planted. I would like to be able to roll it as well, which would deal with the stones. Because the stones we've got here are... Actually, I don't know. Are the stones orange level stones or red level stones? They're orange stones. Yeah, they don't... They're, they're orange level stones. I don't know if orange level stones can be rolled in or not. I know yellow level stones can be rolled in, but... And red ones, you can only remove those with a stone picker. I don't know about the orange grade stone. Interesting to find that out. We don't have a roller, and technically I'm not supposed to buy a roller until we've got a shed to keep it in. So we may not be able to find out about orange level stones. Not just yet. Not unless I can buy a shed and get one here in time. So I'm going to do twice around the field with this. And then once we've done twice around the field, we will set some hired help going in here. Now, the problem that we've got with setting a second hired help going, I can have two hired helps going, but I'm not allowed to do any other jobs because there's only two people here. And that's what I've got to remember at all times is there are two people that work on this farm. There's me and there is Senlea. So that is it. So I can have two hired helps in the fields, which is something that I will be doing. Uh, so that we're both drawing a wage from our labor in the field, which you would do working on a farm anyway. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to be... Um, I can't go and do anything else if, if I've got two people working in the field. Now, uh, someone did ask me a question. How tight can you actually turn in real life with a seed drill? You can turn, if you have a look at this one, look, uh, let me just turn it off a second and I put it down. You'll notice, look, as I turn in the field, so I've, I've got it switched off at the moment. Um, if I turn sideways, it's swinging that machine out sideways, which is putting a tremendous sideways strain. That's a freaky shaking that's going on there. As a tremendous sideways strain on all of the coulters on the sea drill. So all of those little bits on the sea drill is putting a tremendous sideways strain on them. Now, some of them are designed to put up with some sideways strain, but not all of them. It tends to be, certainly the older ones don't take that very well at all. So you would try not to turn tight corners with them. You can turn a sweeping curve. That's not a problem at all. Um, I used, I did, well, I say used to. I, I did some seed drilling. Um, I, I seeded most of a farm I worked on, but only one season worth. Um, so, like, I've got some experience doing it, but not huge amounts of experience. And going around the corners, you had to be, you had to keep a very close eye on the coulters and see if you thought there was a bit too much sideways strain going on. If there was, then you had to stop and lift out. The problem I had with that was I had a little electronic box that counted what you were doing. And if you lifted out of the ground in order to turn around, it would count that you had lifted out of the ground. And so then each time you did, you had to press a button to say, no, I'm actually still doing the outside round. Because this counter, what it would do is it would say, right, you're on this number of rows, which means we're going to block off a couple of coulters um, to leave 
a, a line in the field for the tram lines um, for the sprayer to walk, uh, drive up and down later on. So when you were doing the outside round, you didn't want to lift out unless you had to. Um, because sometimes even though you press the button to remind the thing that no, you you deliberately lifted out and put down, you're still on the outside round. It could still sort of miscount it, and it it could it was a little bit hinky with it. So you had to, you had to be a little bit careful with it. This this little counter box, and so you you kind of like you you went slowly with it. If you were going round a tight corner, you you tried to get round the corner, leaving the drill in the ground you couldn't do it all the time and certainly the outside round would be the one you try to leave down and then the second time round you, you'd try to leave it as it was there was an override setting so you could set it to manual on this little box you just then had to be very careful that you remembered what you were doing um once you got used to it though it, it kind of like it worked quite well you you just set it to manual for the outside rounds is just that once you've done the outside rounds you then had to make sure you clicked it forward a line so that it wouldn't forget what it was doing um and the same if you were going around like little islands like a um telegraph pole or something like that that was in the middle of the field or a tree in the field something like that and across i seeded i think it was about 2000 acres Never used a seed drill before, um, and according to the man on the sprayer, I missed two tram lines. One was the tram line around a single tree that was in one of the fields, and the other was a short headland on the end of one of, well, just the end of one of the fields that was there. And when I say a short headland, I mean... It was about uh, 10 tractor lengths long. It was a really short headland. And that was the only mistakes I made. And I was quite proud of that. I, I felt that was reason to be proud. That I had only that out of two th close to 2,000 acres that I planted. Um, that was the only bits that I'd missed. And uh, acres... For those of you in Europe or uh, I think Australia, Canada, I think the because the, the UK is funny. Um, acres is an imperial measurement. Now we all know that the US works in imperial. Um, not really anywhere else in the world works with imperial measurements. Um, an acre is roughly uh, well, one hectare is roughly two point five acres roughly um i mean it's it's actually pretty close to two and a half acres um so when i say that i did i think it was 1500 acres it may have been closer to 2000 they had 3000 acres altogether, and um some of it was done by another chap when i was doing some different work um but call it 1500 acres so 1500 acres divided by 2.5 I can't off the top of my head think what two and a half into 1500 is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the hired help going there and apparently send layers <laughs> come over here onto this tractor as well as working the plow in the other field which is quite remarkable really send layers very very clever at this um 1,500 divided by 2.5 gives us 600. Of course it does. I should... I'm a little bit slow this morning. I'm a little bit slow. 600 hectares. So I did 600 hectares, never having used a seed drill before in my life. And I was rather proud of the fact that I managed to do 600 hectares with only two very short tram lines missing out of the whole thing nowhere else on the entire estate did i miss a single tram line and i was quite pleased with that um yes more experienced people wouldn't have missed those out but i'll take a, i'll take it for a win I, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna just class that as a win and, and I, i'm gonna take that Right, ploughing over here, we've got that going on quite nicely. Senlea is working over here as well. So we've got 
this happening here we're gonna be planting in this one we will plant wheat which means that we because that's another one that we're going to want to do so we've got wheat and we've got canola and the cycle i'm using is the same cycle i use on um i did already talk about this but just a quick recap it's the same cycle i use on the time lapse series it goes wheat followed by canola followed by corn followed by oats and it's the planting and harvesting windows that make that um rotation quite useful it make that makes that rotation quite good because of when you plant the various different crops and when you harvest them now what i could do is I could remove the oat part from the equation and I could still the only problem with that I couldn't do that actually because the corn over here you harvest that one here this is I needed something in between corn and wheat and oh no I was gonna do barley wasn't I I was going to do barley. I haven't even started planting, so that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm doing barley in this one. Barley was going to be here rather than wheat. We'll do... I, I need to try and remember that. I will eventually remember that we're doing barley on this one. I did say barley, didn't I? I was uh, looking at soybeans, but no, we don't want to do soybeans um, because of harvest and planting times. So barley on here... The barley is harvested a little bit earlier, and then after barley comes canola, which is going to make life actually a little bit easier for us. It's it's just going to give us a little bit more of a window because we need to be able to get an oilseed radish planting done. And the problem with doing corn followed by barley or um, wheat is you can harvest it the first time if you get your planting done in April. You have to make sure you get the planting done in April, and then you can harvest it here but you've then got to plant the wheat or the barley on the same day and we aren't doing that because we have to plant oilseed radish first leave that to go for a month and then we do the next one so because of that we're not able to have that as an option it's, it's just not an option for us we have to do it um with an extra crop in the rotation so i'm using oats and we so that's another spring crop the oats harvest fairly early and then so after the corn you wait until the following spring you plant the oats they harvest nice and early and then we've got time after that has been harvested if you harvest the oats right here we've then got time to plant the oilseed radish and then get the barley in the ground so there's there's a nice window it works out really well for that uh we could say do sorghum the only problem with that is sorghum i like the sorghum but i don't like that there's no straw with it and there's a few other bits i don't particularly like about sorghum as well one of which being that a few people have done various different tests on it and sorghum is now proving to be the least value returned of any of the crops that are available in this game which does push me away from it somewhat um i don't want to do grapes and olives in this series i did some of those in the time lapse um i don't really feel the need to go and do those so something to go between corn because corn barley and canola are needed for the pigs but in order to have that rotation going you need a break between the corn and the next planting now i don't really want to waste all of that time oats they fill in that gap rather beautifully you can get the crop planted and harvested before the next one comes along we can do the same with potatoes it's a little bit later with the harvesting, but you could just about squeeze in some potatoes. But I don't want to include those in a regular, um, a regular rotation because of the sheer amount of work that is involved with potatoes. Now we may end up doing, um, well, we will end up doing root crops. We definitely do want to do root crops in this series because we are going to be having pigs and pigs will want those root crops. It does make a difference to them overall, but I don't want to 
get going on that too soon. Right, let's jump over to here. We can't do anything at the moment. We're not allowed to do I'm going to be strict about this. Two workers at any one time. Because that's myself and Sen Leia. No more than that. So I can have two hired helps. I just can't do anything. So much as I... I mean, I can't... I could go and cut trees down. But then I'm cheating because I've got two workers working in the field. And I'm doing something as well. That makes three workers. Two plus one makes three. Even I can do that bit of maths. And... Yeah, that's that's not acceptable. So we're, go we're going to have to just wait till this ploughing is finished. It's almost done. I just don't want to ride on that tractor because that one is really loud, isn't it? Uh, the other ideas that I've had that I've managed to get feedback from, most of you like the idea of this loan having been gotten rid of. I think I showed you before that I've now got rid of the loan. Um, rid of the loan. Ridden of the loan. Rid of it. Uh, if I hadn't shown you before i i got rid of the loan because you all wanted me to get rid of the loan that's gone no more loan and the series will our aim is to have five million in the bank plus the expensive farmhouse i like the idea of the expensive farmhouse um we own field six right here farmland we own field six that is ours i think that we might as well try to buy up 41 next as well. We've got the windmill up here. Buying 41, I mean, buying 42 would be nice as well. 41 is 184,000. 42. 44 down here is 167. Field 7. See, Field 7 doesn't bring us a lot because of the road going through it and stuff like that. So I'm thinking 44. But what I was also thinking is, yeah, I really like the idea of 41 because it gives us this area in here. Now, probably I would want to farm that as two fields, maybe even three, probably two. Um, but it gives us access to a whole load of trees in here. And the same with 42. But I actually, if we end up getting this one and we get this one up here, I really think we should commit ourselves then to having to get 42 so that we've got the land around this area and that one and then also seven so we, we basically got this patch up here and then we can spread out someone said that they think that our target should be buying every bit of land available to buy on this map that could be interesting that's a lot of money is it each plot is like 167 actually this we can find that out because the plots down here they it's 179 179 179 178 179 there's a few of them that are slightly less they're like 60,000 down here some of these are a bit less as well so we've got some reduction in value on these just to account for like the river and that going through them. So, I mean, I think that we could call the average cost of each of these slices of pie 140,000. 180, 180, because there's quite a few. I mean, maybe 100 and... I mean, all right, let's, let's say 150. I mean, there's a lot of them down here, but there's, there's actually not that many going down the side that are half size. Let's call it 150,000. Let's go over and sit on a tractor a minute and just take a ride. So are we... Let's push that one by. Zoom out a little bit. It's slightly less noisome. And I want to go in here. So what? how many did I say there was? How many have we got? 55. There are 55. 55 times 150,000 gives us eight and a quarter million. Now, I actually said that I wanted the series to end up with five million in our bank account. Five million in our bank account plus spending eight and a quarter million euros on every bit of land available to buy on this map and a 1.1 million euro farmhouse is quite an ambitious target for a series any series let alone a hardcore series don't know if we'll go all that far but we'll see we'll play that by ear 
The canola planting is going very, very well. Racing up across the field. The ploughing is also going very, very well. We're nearly done in here now. So what I'm going to do is just let that one run down to the bottom of the field. And then I will take over and we'll go over and just do those couple little bits over there. And then that gives us another run down across the field, which is uh, easy easier for the tractor to do. They'll struggle a little bit going up the hill. Right, so we'll grab that one there. I will race off. Definitely would like a slightly quieter tractor. This one is going to be the one that we replace first. This is definitely the tractor that we replace first. But once we've got some money back, I want to switch over to new machines again. Um, I really, really liked having that new machine that we started this map with. And I thought this is going to be, like, so cool starting off a new series with a new tractor. Had really high hopes for that. I thought, that, yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. It, it's just perfect. It, it's lovely. And I've already gone and sold it because I desperately, desperately needed the money to be able to keep things going. Because I had a choice to make. I could either keep things going and progress the series a little bit more or just stall essentially and go to that point. You know that point? Everyone has the different points on the maps, um, but that point where you're basically just repeating the same thing over and over and over for a while in order to make a little bit of money so that you can then get to the next bit that you want to do. Now, there's nothing wrong with that normally, it's just that when I'm trying to do gameplay for people to watch, that's the bit that we don't really want to get bogged down on too much. So I try to avoid having those bits. Uh, but I was talking before about the the bit where... Seriously, it's in the air again? <laughs> that's fantastic. Sen is very busy. Like, hats off to her, she, she is quite a talented girl. She is able to come out here and work this field here, get over there and work that field over there and seems to manage to do so without breaking the sweat. So I don't know what we're doing. We're just kind of sat twiddling our thumbs watching Sen do all of the work. Um, the What was I saying? I do that. Um Like, my whole mind is gone. Oh, oh, um, the, the, you know, I, I was talking before about when a game, when you're doing gameplay, Sen's even managed to go and get changed this time. Um, when you're doing gameplay and you reach the point where suddenly you want to upgrade everything, but you, you kind of like, do you upgrade? Do you, what do you upgrade? You know, you, you kind of reach the point where you've got small machinery and more land, or you're going for big machinery and you haven't got the land, and it's, it's that kind of bit where everything starts to take off and your machinery isn't quite matching. Um, and so it's going bigger scale, but it's taking a lot longer to do each section, but you haven't quite got the money yet to go and change things over. And I was talking a little bit about that, and I had quite a few comments from people saying, that you know that's the sort of the stage that some of you really like that stage it's where you really start to upgrade everything but you, you've got to make the choices really carefully about which bit you upgrade and when because um you can't do everything all at once others of you saying well, you don't really like that stage at all because it gets a little bit dull and repetitive and you just got to keep doing things over and over until you get past that and you get to the larger scale um, so it's quite interesting seeing the different responses from people. It's also interesting noting that there's quite a lot of you saying, well, actually, I'm playing such and such map, and that's the stage I'm on right now. Um, loving it, or, you know, just trying to burn through it because this is a bit that I don't like. Um, it's always good sort of hearing about the... Oh, so much better, isn't it? The tractor is... I like the roar of the tractor. Don't get me wrong. I, I think the roar of the tractor is absolutely fantastic. It's just very loud. It's, it's it's very very loud um okay we've plowed in this one now 
And we've got, there's a couple of little dots over here. That's because of the landscaping bit that I did. Um, there's a little bit down there that looks like it hasn't been plowed. We'll go and check that out in a minute. Um, there's a bit there and a bit there as well. And, I mean, it might be stones, in which case there's not a lot we can do about it. Stones up there. And we're only going to be able to get one layer of fertilizer onto there, because we don't have anything organic to put on the field. So we've got no option with that one. And then we've got... Um, this one has got some bits with two layers and some bits with one layer. I could try and do compost the way that I'm doing on the other series. On the time lapse series, I've got a compost tower that I've gone. It's basically a silage tower, and I just changed it so that it makes compost instead of silage. Would that be something you want to see? Genuinely, I'm I'm not sure, to be honest, like, you know, whether I'd want to do it or not. Right, that has actually ploughed out the little piece there. But what is irritating about the edge just there, I'm going to landscape out. Is this. So I'm going to take painting. I'm just going to have a bit of grass right there. Don't use a square if you do something like this change it, press V, change it so that you've got the circle, and use the circle to go up close like this what I'm trying to do is get rid of the plants there what I'm actually going to end up having to do, because those plants are like right into the ploughed area but I'm actually having to delete ploughed area in order to do that, which is not what I wanted to do See? I might want to do that. But I don't want the plants growing on the field like that. That's something that's that is a particular sort of bugbear of mine. It's it's one of those little details that um just irritates me. No end. I will sometimes spend quite a long time looking around a field to try and find the bits where the crop is that there's plants growing right into the field and get rid of them and like here look you've got little bits of stubble that are out on the edge and the only way you get rid of them is if you plow the field out a little bit. unfortunately folks that is all we have got time for today a massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the great book of names to find out some more details about all the names coming past please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.